Hello today, this is Spellbinder with this article from Veterans Today, Military Veterans and Foreign Affairs Journal. This is pretty bad. The nose candy that these soldiers have taken is not cocaine, though that would have been harmless compared to this nose candy. GI brains fried by military dispersed nose candy. October 2nd, 2010. From San Francisco. It's now official. Researchers have shown that uranium oxide or depleted uranium travels the nerves from the nose to the brain. In the words of a University of Chicago doc and researcher, it says a tiny amount, a milligram, of this radioactive poison quick marches up your smelling nerves right into your brain and keeps firing 1.2 million bullets a day forever. That's a bunch. 850 rounds a minute. The radioactive 850 rounds a minute automatic weapon is about as big as the period at the end of this sentence. Never needs reloading and never jams. It's a perfect killing machine for brain cells and other cells. The range is up to 20 cells distant. After that, there is what the famous British physicist Dr. Chris Busley, uh, Busby calls the bystander effect. He discovered it. He gets it to name it. These radioactive automatic weapons are so small they can float right through your clothes, invade your skin's defenses, and invade your body. Whenever the weapon is alight inside, there is trouble as they never stop firing, and there is no limit to their number. In a soldier's brain, trouble shows up in a noticeable way to others. As the 20-cell radius ball within range, think of these powerful bullets, each as a hundred car 100 mile an hour or 160 kilometers per hour fully loaded freight train obliterating a small dog tied to the railroad tracks right for the 20 cells that are within range in all directions it ain't pretty to me this means these 20 cell radius spheres and soldiers and vets brains turn to jelly or mush Weird diseases, or cancers, or are, or are of the above. No wonder VA Secretary and former General Eric Skinsiki has noted the big increase in the VA's contract psychiatric services. This radioactive bullet explanation for vets' unusual behavior holds water and mass perfect or makes perfect sense to me. The vets are under attack internally, actually inside their skulls and in their brains. Worse, there is nothing they can do about it. The huge VA system is also helpless. There is no cure and no treatment. The VA knows it and is uh, stonewalling. They fired the only doc who stood up to them on depleted uranium. Word travels fast among cowed medical staffs. So, the vet gets slapped with some fake diagnosis and sent to a shrink or told there is nothing wrong with them. No way. The spineless docs are going to call it like it is. They grab their 250k and slink home, comfortable every night. That ain't no way to run an army, but it is a way to run the world's most lethal armed force right into the ground. Major Doug Roki, Ph.D. retired, former director of the Pentagon's depleted uranium project, puts it scantily, succinctly, it, depleted uranium, is killing our troops. General Eric Senseki, head of VA, since no less than General Senseki has pointed out the huge increase in contract psychiatric services, let's all take a note of it and ask real loud, why is this happening to vets? They are not the enemy. 
It's way past time to take names and kick ass in D.C. That means changing the president as she, he, she appoints the head of the D.O.D. Not so hard to do, really. It's simply what is required. No wonder depleted uranium in the brain drives vets nuts. The suffering these vets must go through, it's unimaginable. Okay, here's the targeted sci science. Make up your own minds. I did. The abstract of it. This is tiny URL. You can look up there. When I put this article at the bottom of the page, or the video, you'll be able to find these uh, links. I put the link to this page. Uranium travels nerves from nose to brain. July 31st, 2009. It's been over a year and they've known about this. Actually, they've known about it since 2000 when we first went into Iraq and started using uh, the silent nuclear weapon called depleted uranium bullets and bombs. Uh, ter the Ternary BBS Freelon E. Tentoris L. Argus and Odell Sessi, while all these people in 2009, row of over factory receptor neurons in the direct transport of inhaled uranium to the rat brain. It's is uh, in these links. Uh, Paul Ubig DVM says radioactive uranium that is inhaled by soldiers on the battlefield and by workers in factories may bypass the brain's protective barrier by following nerves from the nose directly to the brain. Nerves can act as unique conduits carrying inhaled uranium from the nose directly to the brain finds a study with rats. Once in the brain, uranium may t affect task and decision related types of thinking. The study provides yet another example of how some substances can use the overfactory system bypassing the brain's protective blood barrier to go directly to the brain. Titanium nanoparticles in the metals Magnanese, nickel, and thallium have been shown to reach the brain using the same route. Military personnel and people who work in uranium processing plants are exposed to the weak radioactive element VIA wounds or by breathing. Exposure may affect brain function. Cognitive skills are lowered in soldiers who carry uranium laced shrapnel. Uranium has various industrial and military uses. A form of uranium called depleted uranium is very dense and is used in armor piercing ammunition and military vehicle armor. Battlefield exposure can occur through wounds, such as with some U.S. military personnel who were injured during the Gulf War. These exposures can be higher than with civilians who work with the element. A study of the Gulf War veterans who have uranium shrapnel in their bodies show that they perform more poorly on general brain cognitive tests of performance, efficiency, and accuracy. Uranium can also be inhaled. Soldiers in vehicles hit by uranium rounds and workers in uranium processing facilities can breathe it in. The researchers taking advantage of the fact that uranium can exist in different forms or isotopes use rats to compare how the element travels through the body if it is inhaled or injected into the blood. The animals breathed in one isotopes at levels similar to those encountered on the battlefield where depleted uranium weapons are used. They were also injected with a different isotopes. Researchers compared the levels of the two isotopes in different regions of the brain. The inhaled isotopes accumulated at two to three times higher levels than the injected isotopes in the overfactory smell paths from the nose to the brain and, and the frontal cortex and the hyper hypothalamus of the brain. This is concerning because the front part of the brain controls executive functionings, uh, which is the broad ability to gather information, make decisions, and to initiate action. Scientists then chemically damaged the overfactory nerves in the nose. The rats with the damaged nerves had three times less uranium in their overfactory system than the rats with intact ovary nerves. These findings suggest that inhaled uranium can travel directly from the nose along the overfactory nerves to the front part of the brain. The overfactory pathway then plays an important role and inhaled uranium reaching the brain. It is not known from the study if soldiers and civilian workers that breathe uranium could be at even higher risk of cognitive effects 
or if inhaled uranium may affect brain function in similar ways as when it is carried through the blood. It is also unclear if these findings would hold true for the human brain since the rat brain is much more developed for smelling than the human brain. Assessing, assessing these possible risks and determining if people relatively undeveloped sense of smell could protect the brain would require further studies of people exposed to uranium through inhalation. Number two, the abstract. Uranium presents numerous industries and military uses, and one of the most important risks of contamination is dust inhalation. In contrast to other modes of contamination, the inhaled uranium has been proposed to enter the brain not only by the common root of all models or modes of exposure, the blood pathway, but also by specific inhalation, exposure route. The, over, uh, the olfactory pathway that tests whether the inhaled uranium entered the brain directly from the nasal cavity. Mel Sturridge, Daldry rats were exposed to both inhaled and intrapotentially injected uranium using the 236U and 233U respectively as tracers. The results showed a specific frontal brain accumulation of the inhaled uranium, which is not observed with the injected uranium. Furthermore, the inhaled uranium is higher than the injected uranium in the olfactory bulbs, OBs, and tubercles in the, in the frontal cortex and in the hyperthymus. In contrast, the other cerebral areas, cortex, hippocampus, and cerebrium and brain residue did not show any potential accumulation of inhaled or injected uranium. These results mean that inhaled uranium enters the brain via a direct transfer from the nasal turbulence, turbulence and the OB in addition to the systematic pathway. The uranium transfer from the nasal turbinates of the OB to the lower in the animal showing a reduced level of olfactory receptor neurons or ends induced in the overfactory ellip ellip lesions prior to the uranium inhalation exposure these results give prominence to a row of the ORN in direct transfer of the uranium from the nasal cavity to the brain amazing isn't it note that in internal part of the article including when distributing copyright by Bob Nichols 2010. Feel free to distribute with attributions and notes. Here are the attributions and notes. So, de depleted uranium rods shaped into bullets, capped with steel tip to keep them together when they go shooting out the barrel. And basically, you're using spent uranium rods. That's how they're getting rid of the nuclear waste from uh, from these uh, power plants. Uh, they just, um, I mean, the people I knew that worked in big bombs on a base in the Air Force wore radiation tags these little badges that told them how much they were getting affected just by moving it from the process table when they're putting them together to putting them in ammo cans and they had to wear these badges to see how much radiation they were absorbing and uh, I mean this is really really bad I'm telling you right now the, they said that I've read reports saying over 400 just in Iraq, nuclear Hiroshima bombs have been basically detonated without a flash because of all the DU they used during that war for the last, what, 12 years? It seems, well, it feels like 12. I think it's about nine, nine years down there. Actually, longer than that because it was Bush Sr. that started this craziness, wasn't it? So it started way back when they started to nuke... Iraq. I mean, Fallujah, you can't even go in Fallujah. It's a barred city. It has so much DU in it that they barred it because it gives off so much radiation. It's the most dangerously, you could die after being exposed to Fallujah. I mean, <laughs> it's pretty bad. And they shut the city off. You're not allowed to go there and visit in Iraq. So, remember all this, people. This is what the government, the loving government, did to our own soldiers. They have put them in a potential deadly exposure to nuclear weapons, and they're not going to do anything because they can't now because they're just exposed to this radiation forever and ever. It just keeps, it's, it's a gift that keeps on giving. Thank your government. They love us. They love our soldiers. 
Until next time, this is Spellbinder with this news article on depleted uranium in our <laughs> uranium in our soldiers. Good day.